This is ridiculous. Call for a personal foul. That was absolutely ridiculous. The Boston Bruins have won the Stanley Cup. Up on down. Here comes a one-two pitch. Red Sox win the World Series. I don't know. It's tough. I, t- Tom's up there, man. What is going on, everybody? Welcome to episode 12 of the Bean Town Take podcast. We haven't done a podcast in a while, and finally, we are back. It's Jesse Almeida here. I'm here with Mike. What's going on, guys? And we haven't done a podcast in a while. I've been on Florida on a trip to Florida recently for a little vacation. Uh, that was great. It was nice to have a little bit of a break, and obviously, we got a lot to cover. Seeing that the Red Sox postseason ended and all that. And we're just going to hop straight into it. You want to go first or you want me? All you. That was a mistake. That was a big mistake. Because I got a picture uh, to show my opening take. Um, okay. I, it might flash you some memories. Ouch. Yes. Ouch. <laughs> that's, that's my opening take. The Red Sox... Had a very successful season in my eyes. Um, you asked me what my grade was for the Red Sox season. We do have that for me and him. But that's we're going to save that for the Red Sox portion of the podcast. But to open off, I bowed down to the robots for their decision making this season. I can't believe I'm saying that. But at the same time... You got to give credit where credit is due. They deserve it. I did not have the Red Sox going to the American League Championship Series, one. And two, I did not have them having a competitive series in the American League Championship Series. I honestly thought that they were going to be in the wild card, done, or be in the American League Divisional Series, and done. So I give them a huge credit for the season they had, and I can't wait to see what this future holds for this Red Sox team. Yeah, it was a definitely good, uh, definitely good season. Uh, they had some great additions. Uh, what they got with uh, some of the signings that they got that were pretty underrated. But I also think that their moves at the or their non moves at the trade deadline is what really got it. What really did them in? We could we're gonna go into that because obviously, like for me, it's very hard to say like their uh, trade deadline moves were a factor in this after them overachieving so much. Schwarber obviously making a big impact with the Red Sox as we've heard from uh, Bobby Dahlbeck that he helped him out with his uh, vision at the plate and his swing swing selection. So obviously he played a huge role. Robles played a huge role this season coming out of the pen and also who else did they get? Austin Davis, a lefty who had his flashes in the postseason. But we're going to go into the Red Sox. Today is the day where we have our grade for the Red Sox. And today we might even say, even though it's early, what we predict for the opt-outs for the Red Sox. Obviously, Schwarber has already announced that he's declining his mutual option. So he's becoming a free agent. So we'll determine... Who should be re-signed and who shouldn't be re-signed. But today is a very good day for the Red Sox, in my opinion. You should be very excited for this Red Sox team in the future. That's my opening take. I send it over to you. Uh, I'm going to go with the road to 7-10 and 10 is still alive, baby. I, I've been oh, saying this about the Patriots. And I will continue to say about the Patriots. They will not go over 500 this year i will bet the house the mortgage my future anything so here so here is this patriot schedule right here and the remaining schedule you got carolina cleveland atlanta tennessee buffalo twice indianapolis jacksonville and miami i have carolina as a win cleveland as a win seeing how bad they've been Atlanta is a win, Indianapolis is a win, Jacksonville is a win, and Miami is a win. I got them, I want to say 9-8. and eight. I want to say I have them at 9-8. and eight. I think that's a good prediction, but 
that I, that puts them right around 50% middle of the pack. Um, you have them obviously seven and ten. I right? have them. I have them possibly even six and eleven. Yikes. Yep. I told you. I, I don't. I have no faith in this team, and they have some tough competition coming up ahead of them. You're gonna get swept by Buffalo. Tennessee, even without Derrick Henry, still run the ball down your throat. Indianapolis has uh, Jonathan Taylor, who's gonna run the ball down your throat too. And Carson Wentz is actually playing pretty good. Not saying that he's you know MVP Carson Wentz, but he's playing decent. Cleveland will still run the ball down your throat as long as they have Nick Chubb and both their and their offensive line healthy. Nick Chubb will run that ball 200 yards on you. Uh, Carolina, I'm telling you, Stephon Gilmore, three picks, lock it in. Lock that in. And Miami, at, at Miami for the last week, has never been great in the past with the past two meetings being the Mike Gusecki coming out game uh, that made you into the wild card team. And then the other one was the Miami Miracle. I do believe were the last times you were at Miami and week in the last week. Okay, that's your opening take. That is my opening take. Lock it in, under five hundred for the Red Sox. Uh, sorry for the Patriots, under so, five hundred. So that would so th- that would equal out the fact that you'd have to do the clown suit because like obviously the Red Sox somehow made it this far, and then also you have the Patriots who would go six and six and eleven or whatever you predicted him. So yeah. that would be pretty much a wash for the bet there or whatever. Um, Red, we go right into the Red Sox. Our grades for the regular season and the postseason for the Red Sox are in. Again, I don't know why he's wearing that hat right there because he's told me over text that he is a free agent in the MLB fan club. I am. And you actually told me that you were rooting for the Giants for the remainder of the season, and the next day they get eliminated too. Maybe you're the bad luck for the teams. Sucks for them, I guess. Yeah. <laughs> so we'll we'll hop right into the Red Sox, and we're gonna give us uh, give our grades on the season. The Red Sox. I give him a round of applause. Even though the Red Sox did not win the World Series or was even in the World Series this year, they had, in my opinion, a very successful season that will attract free agents to their club. And I'm excited for their future going forward. Um, As I mentioned, we have our grades on the Red Sox season. And you want to give your grade first? Or you want me to do it first? You can, you can give yours. You're gonna you're gonna give it to the diehard Sox fan first. Okay. Yeah, so I want to see what the crazy uh, uh, bias grade is first. I'm not giving a bias grade. I mentioned, I think in that ALDS video, that they at least get a B plus for me. But I think I'm gonna change. I think I'm gonna change that grade. Okay. What are you changing it to? I normally don't do this. I'm normally a hard judge because that's just how I am and that's how I judge baseball for the Red Sox or whatever in my Boston teams because like normally other than a winning season is a failure. That's that's the mindset of a Boston fan. But in this case, I'm going to give them an A. I'm going to give them an A on the season. And I know you're probably saying like, oh, that's probably a biased... Uh, grade, but you got to look back when Stan- when the Yankees came in to Boston and swept the Red Sox that last week at Fen- weekend at Fenway for the regular season. Y- you thought for sure that the Red Sox were either going to lose the wild card game or not even be in the postseason at all. And in the trade deadline too, after the trade deadline, as you mentioned, they didn't do moves that you would want them to do. So you figured, and the the team afterwards played garbage after the front office didn't get behind them, really. So you figured with those aspects, you thought there'd be no way the Red Sox would make it th- as far as they did. But they showed that the regular season, all you have to do is just win enough games to make it to the playoffs and then in the playoffs 
anything can happen. And that's what this Red Sox team proved. They grinded it out to the very end. They played with it. They played 110% each night. And I'm going to argue too that they could have gone even farther than they did. We'll get into that topic later on. But at the moment, I give them an A. I can't give them an A plus because an A plus to me means that they went to the World Series or they won the World Series. So I can't give them an A plus. Normally, I don't give them an A for a second a wild a um, ALCS exit, but in this case, with the expectation that they had at the beginning of the year, where a lot of people writ them has written them off already. And said that they have the worst odds out of all Boston's teams to make a to make a postseason run. You had them, I believe, fourth. I had them third. The, a lot of people did not believe in this Red Sox team, and I got to give a credit, and I got to give a shout out to two people who did predict the Red Sox to get this far, and that's my grandfather, who's probably watching this right now. I got to give him. A huge round of applause because he told me since March that this team had a chance to make a run. And we also have a, have to give a shout out to our boy Tom who was on, a, I, I forget what podcast it was, but he predicted the Red Sox to go pretty far as well. Yes. I think we're in good shape. Yeah? I think, I think the Red Sox are in good shape. Uh... Yeah, I, I feel very strongly about the Red Sox, right? Okay. So we have to. I have to give a shout out to those two people. They nailed it. I didn't think that this would be possible, but they nailed it, and it's an A for me for the Red Sox. Originally, originally when they got to the ALCS and lost, I was ready to give them that the same kind of B plus, A minus range. Until Atlanta won. And when I started Atlanta won, it reminded me that the Red Sox get a big fat F minus for this year. Wait a minute. Wait wait a minute. How wait first of all, you're not gonna speed past that like you didn't just say what you just said. What? F minus. You're on drugs. You're on drugs. Because you're fired. You, you know what? Atlanta lost their best player and arguably a top three top two MLB player right now in Acuna. Everybody wrote him off, thought they weren't going to do anything after that. What did they do? They went out of the trade deadline and got four major keys and won the World Series. They went all in on a team that was, wasn't was even supposed to be there. They got Jock Peterson, they got Eddie Rosario, Duvall, and Jorge Solar, and they all crushed it in the postseason and carried that team to a World Series win after Kunu went down. I am telling you, that is what you're supposed to do even when that team has no right. That Atlanta team had no right being in, in the postseason. They had 88 wins, and they absolutely killed every team they played that postseason. They shelled the crap out of them because they made the right moves and went all in, even when their team they didn't look like they could even make the playoffs. They went all in, and that's what you're supposed to do. And they, they did it, and they paid off and because the Red Sox didn't, if the Red Sox got one of those players, that might have pushed them over the edge over Houston. But you know what? They didn't. They got outplayed. They got, they just got outplayed. They got outplayed, but they also got out umped as well. No, but don't. The, yeah, no. Yeah, yeah, I am bringing it up because. No. I am bringing it up because. No, you have no right to bring bring up that uh, that umping situation. Of course I do. Be, no, because. Of course I do. The only team that has a ha, can say something about an ump is the is the San Francisco Giants because they had their season end on a blown call. You still had two games nobody left. Nobody was on base. You still nobody had. Nobody was on base. What do you mean nobody was on base? Nobody was on base in that Giants game. There was some. There was run around first. He's not a score. Is he not? He's not a. It doesn't. Okay, so he's not a score position. But it doesn't matter. They the call. The, call, the he, call was a was a check swing that they said strike three on when he did not go close to going around, and that was the that was the third out in the ninth inning. That ended their season. It and it complete. It, it is one hundred percent ended their season. That call ended their season. If Vlad, you still had two games left. If Laz Diaz called that strike three. 
on that pitch. The inning is over. The inning is over, and you're tied by two runs. You're, you're tied at two. Going into the bottom of the ninth inning with the heart of the order coming, you're not down nine to two or whatever it was going you, into the bottom of the ninth inning. That cost them the game. That changed the series. And that's just bottom line, period. And that's facts. If you want to argue with me that the Red Sox should have, that could have came up in clutch situations on opportunities in this game, fine. But at the same time, you can't have as many bad calls as Laz Diaz did in that game. Inexcusable. There's no excuse for that. The, the, just his bottom line. I'm just saying that they aren't. They were not mentally. They don't have the mental makeup to win a World Series, and they're nowhere near it. If that's what that's gonna throw them off and derail their season, is one blown call. He could have came back and thrown another strike and said he hung a pitch that got, and it started that it, inning. If you really, really believed in this team, they would have came back and they would have stormed back. They still had two games left to play, in that series. Two games have to play in that series, and they didn't. They didn't come up. So I, I, I'm sorry, but that is that is not on Laz Diaz. That is on the Red Sox, hundred percent. I just want to. Did, did you th did, so? You gave them an F minus. F minus. So did you? So you had them. So and bl means, blaming the umpires made the F get a minus. So, so okay. So, so your thought process is. There's no way to have a successful season unless you win the World Series. No, if so, what? Let me ask if, you this: if, if if Houston won, I would have kept them at a B plus because it showed you that you don't need to make off season to make trade deadline moves to win a World Series because the Astros Houston did. Who they get? Kendall Graveman. Okay, but they got what one reliever? They got a couple, I believe. Yeah, but not anybody that that really that really came in and made a huge. Hold on, I will pull this up because I'm telling you, they did not make most of the players on their team were on their team in the beginning of the year. They were on their team in the beginning of the year. Does it say like how they were acquired or anything like that? I'm uh, what I'm doing is I'm going through all their players. And I'm looking for their profile picture here because their profile picture would have another team. And they, they didn't get Graveman. Yeah, they did. I'm looking at the roster right now. They don't have Graveman. They have Graveman. Where would you have to see Graveman on this roster? Look up Kendall Graveman and then that'll tell you what team he's on. He got traded from Seattle to Houston. Yes. Okay, what are you doing this postseason? I'm so, uh, even so, right? So they got one reliever, right? So they didn't make a. They didn't go out and. Who was and, arguably the best reliever in baseball this year? Uh, hot hot take alert. That's a, what do you mean that's a hot take alert? That's hot, a, he had a 177 ERA as you're looking in 53 games. That's not a hot, hot take, really. That's a great season by it, a relief pitcher. Well, if you want to do uh, advanced analytics, he only had two that's wins not above replacement. Analytics. Two wins above re replacement? There's, He's a reliever. He's there's not more, supposed to have a high. There's more and that's high for a reliever, too. There's more relievers and more with a higher war. Uh, you show me some relievers that have a higher war than a two. You know what? On our next break, I will find it, and I'll bring it up in in the wrap-up. All right, so um, I, got a, I got a question for you right now. Who was the biggest – how do I put it? Who was the biggest con contributor to this Red Sox postseason run? For me, I would say it has to be Nate Evaldi. With his pitching performance in the wild card game and against Tampa Bay, he was constantly good. I mean, you could there's a bunch of names who you could say. You could say it was Kike Hernandez, obviously, but then he got cold. And then you could say it was Schwarber who had a good good postseason. 
But in my opinion, it has to be. In my opinion, it's Nate Evaldi, and he he's, he was just lights out for them all postseason, and he was the Red Sox best pitcher in the postseason. Yeah, he definitely definitely came in clutch more than uh more than most of their pitchers. He was he's the most consistent pitcher. Yep. Um, but I would say. If you're asking me who like who helped them get to the deep like make this deep run in the postseason, I would have to go with Schwarber. Okay. I, I think it's Schwarber. I think he came in and he had probably some of the some of the most clutch hits for the Red Sox. Do you think they should bring Schwarber back next season? I believe that Schwarber will make more money will will be able to get more money. I believe that too. I on mean, another he, team. So you you're saying he they're not gonna resign him? I think that they're going to try to, but I believe that he will uh, make money elsewhere. So I mean, that le- So we have. For, you want to pull up free agents for me for the Red Sox real quick? Red Sox free agents. Red Sox free agents. Yes. So this season we have a decision to wait on JD Martin. Oh wait a minute! I have to add that meme in there too because. I'm still having fun with this Yankee wild card game. Man, is that under the J.D. Martinez slide? What yeah, it the... is. I, I was trying to fool you. I was fooling you with that. Oh, but, my. But, um... What a clown. <laughs> what a clown. I, I, I'm gonna... I'm gonna... Th- th- that, that's my face when I hear that you give the Red Sox an F- minus on the season. Josh Hader, by the way. Josh Hader, highest war. By almost double what the other guy had. Is that for this season? For this season. That's for this season. Okay. Josh Hader. Who who else is there? I for do believe Trevor. He's a he's a starting pitcher for Miami. Oh. Yeah. Jonathan Weizaga had the same as Josh Hader. Huh. Uh, uh. There's been plenty of uh, pitchers, but. And plus, uh, I mean, uh, Whitlock. Whitlock was better. Yep, I see that. So I'm just saying they're uh, Barlow reliever. <laughs> I'm just saying that there's other relievers with oh Scott Barlow, Kansas City Royals relief pitcher, relief pitcher. So I'm just saying he probably I... pitched every game for them. Yeah, I'm just <laughs> you, Kansas City not doing too much, so he's like, yeah, we'll give you a shot. Nestor Cortez for the Yankees, he's a reliever. Uh, Pablo Lopez. Also, leave a question mark. Uh, starter. That starter. Yep. Okay. Liam Hendricks. Yeah. Uh, Nick Pavetta halfway through the season became a reliever. Nah, he's he's a starter in my. Craig opinion. Kimbrell. Kimbrell. Okay. Uh, and then this is, this should be our last bunch. Kyle. F- no, he's a he's a starter. Uh, yeah. Then we get into Kenley Jansen. Chad Jose. Green. Chad Green. Yep. Oh, wow. I'm surprised, Chad Green. I know, me high. too. I'm surprised in that, too. And, uh, uh, previous bottom. That's it. So, so, so he's, not even, you he's say? not even in the top 200. I'm talking Tyler, Glas- no. Tyler Glasnow had a 2 3. I'm, talking about, just, I'm talking about just relief pitchers. Just relief pitchers. What's he, maybe top 20? Yeah, okay. So he's a top 20 reliever. Who they? That's the only acquisition that they really made. The only key acquisition that they made. Mind you, they're down Verlander. And Granky plays like absolute dog water. So you're trying to tell me that, you know, like Lance McCullers was out for the ALCS. Yeah, they, they had, and, that was a huge opportunity that they missed on. I will give you that. And you know what I mean? Like, so they didn't really make a whole lot of different changes, like, on the, on the deadline. I just can't believe that. And they, you, and, and they beat you. I just can't believe that you're giving them an F minus for F after the. Minus. After the whole. After the. Your prediction had them in fourth place. So if the Red Sox finished in fourth place, would you still give them an F minus? No, I would have probably given them a C. <laughs> you serious? That doesn't make any sense. That literally don't make any sense no, because, whatsoever. No, because that, that's what's my... That would be what I expected from them. So they get a C. But because that's because that's the average, a C is average. So I thought that okay, that makes sense for them to, to be there. So that's it. But since you were in first place for that long, and then you fall, barely make a wild card seat, and then 
and mind you, at the trade deadline, you're first in the in, in the AL, and you're killing it, and you don't even attempt to make to make any real. I mean, you got Schwarber, and then you brought in a bunch of relievers that, for most part of the uh, season, when you brought them in, are were mop up duty. I wish I could zoom into the to the face right here, and then do like the uh, the dude the dude that's sit, sitting in the rain in tears or whatever, like with the the being salt emoji mm-hmm. or whatever, but. And you know what? I would have thought that they were really if, if if they didn't make any moves at all in the deadline, and they still got to the ALCS. That to me would have been would have been better than what they did, making moves and losing the ALCS. Okay, so because you gave up, even though the assets you gave up weren't the best assets, you still gave up assets for for rentals that proved uh, like that. If you're gonna get a rental, you better win. Is all I'm gonna say, or you better be able to re-sign them. And since Schwarber already opted out, you might be in trouble. So, how? So obviously the Red Sox have player options, and they have uh, decisions to make. One of them being Eduardo Rodriguez and Christian Vasquez. Did Erod do enough in the postseason where you feel like they should resign him? Because he did have a good start in what was it, the ALDS? Against the Rays, it, it, it depends on how much he wants. Yep. If he's looking, because there are teams out there who will give him twenty million a year. Detroit, Kansas City. You think there's gonna be te- teams giving him twenty million dollars? There are teams who will give him twenty million. Wow. Okay, that's a hot take. Uh, no, I think twenty million is is baseline for Eduardo Rodriguez. And you might see more than 20 million from Erod. So, I, I'm just check, taking a look at a, at a list right here. Um definitely Garrett Richards I would think is gone. No, they're going to keep him. They like him. <laughs> they like the spin rate. They they like the nerds. The nerds like the spin rate. Okay. Let's just pray to God that Garrett Richards is gone. Martin Perez I think is gone. Matt uh, Andrees, I don't know. He comes off the books. He's already um, he's already not on the team anymore. Um, this is this is free agents I'm looking at, correct? These are people, yes. Okay, Ottavino. I have I don't know to be honest with you for Ottavino. He had an okay season, but like, I don't know if he's gonna want more than what he's getting now. I don't think you could bring him back for what he's making now. Okay. Um, Robles. Pro- let's hope gone, but. He was your best reliever in the postseason. Yeah, 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 yeah. I know that. But I mean, dead serious, he was probably your best reliever in the postseason. If he, if, if I'm getting the Robles I did in the postseason, then sure, I guess. Sure, I'll take him back. Uh, Danny Santana. Gone. Gone. Travis, Travis Shaw. Shaw. Gone. Ah, they might keep him. Because <laughs> Cora likes to game plan with him. Out of this list here, I would say I hope... I would think the Red Sox take the club option on Vasquez for seven million. Yeah, because I don't really think you have another catcher. Yep. That's I mean you have Pilecki, but who's your next one? Connor Wong. So, yeah, it would be Connor Wong. Yeah, you're, so, yeah, you're, you're not bringing you're, up you're Connor not, Wong. You're not up Connor Wong. So I that's think a, that's a Wong choice. <laughs> oh my god! Such a bad joke. That's such a bad joke. Can we, you talking about me with the can, bad jokes? Can, can we insert the Seinfeld rift? I got you. <laughs> um, you you could send me the link and then I'll put it in there. Uh, Jose, I, I would, yeah, I, I I think Vasquez they'll they'll bring back. They're gonna try to bring back Schwarber, but again, they don't have that much money. Uh, JD Martinez is probably gonna pick up the player option, and I mean he might be able to opt out, but at thirty four at thirty four years old, I don't think he'll get more than what he's making now. And then Jose Iglesias, I think that they should try to bring him back. I agree with that. That's a good take. I'll give you that. That's a good take. I think they should try to bring him back, except for the fact that I don't think they're going to be able to afford to bring him back unless they can get him for really cheap, at like $5 million a year. So, but I think he played... I think at the moment... I think his last month, he played so well that he might get a national contract from the, I, from the I, team. I looked at it, and, like, if everybody opts into their thing... I was looking at I was looking at their uh, payroll. If everybody opts in, they have about $11 million to spend, something like that. Because the next year, uh, at the moment... If you bring in J.D. Martinez and Christian Vasquez, you're at... What is that? That's 26. You're at $7 million. Yeah, so, I mean... You get you got, you have $33 million right now that does not new, factor in J.D. Martinez or Christian Vasquez. A lot of this, this these decisions, is going to come down to what the um, 
CBA meeting is gonna be. Walk out. Walk it, I think out. It, I think Walk there is one out. coming. Walk I really out. I really want to say there is a lockout coming, because the players right now the players union right like the uh, payroll right now is at 210 million, and then it's what it's MLB wanted to drop to 180 million something like that. That ain't gonna happen. No. That's not gonna happen. I would say it'd probably be about 200 million. That's like the middle ground, I believe. Even if you do that, though, that's just like I don't know, because I think the players are gonna want to increase the salary cap so way that you can get people, more people can get bigger contracts. I I think it could potentially stay the same. I think it should just stay the same. I think it should too. I mean, if that's the case, then the Red Sox have quite a bit to spend. Seven million. Because I they believe only have 7 million. if you they have third they have I looked it up they have thirty three million dollars right now in cap space and then that is not factoring J D Martinez or Christian Vasquez can we back can we can we check it can we check on that uh, I've been I'm checking not, this I'm out. not saying I don't believe you I'm just I just want to see like I like seeing it seeing it face to face uh, it would be yeah just go back to Red Sox the payroll table for 2022. I believe I was looking at this the other day. Their current payroll, that's not including. It's 164, so you have 33 million. Yep. And that is including JD and all of them. That's including JD Martinez. How can they do that since they haven't picked it up? Because because oh well, but this... you, so but you still but you gotta remember right? Do you still have arbitration on Rafi? Yeah. You... This you, is including all of that, I believe. You don't. I don't believe Rafi Devers is gonna just get ten point seven. He'll probably get close. He'll probably get a little bit more. Yep. Renfro might get a little bit more. Yep. Especially if he wins Gold Glove, he'll probably get more. Yep. This is in, this uh, right here is including all of their mo moves. Yeah. Like if everybody opts in, and what their arbitrations could potentially be. So you're gonna have around 30, 30, 30 million. I would say about maybe 30. 30, 30 million to spend. If JD opts in, so what if he opts out? If he opts out, I I would do all I can to get Schwarber to be the DA or or yeah, I would have him DH, maybe d move Devers over to first, then you have a slot open at third, and no Throbby D. Oh yeah, you got Throb. Yeah, you could do that. Or, I guess. or you could move. Bobby Dahl back back to third his natural position because he's a better third baseman than Rafi Devers. Yep. And take away I, I don't know why they haven't done that already, but so then your outfield would be Verdugo, Kike, and Renfro full time. And your DH. DH would be Schwarber. Oh yeah, see if you can get them back. Yep. Devers would be first. Second would be Iglesias. Yeah. If you resign him, shortstop Bogarts, third base Dahlbeck, catcher Vasquez. It's not bad. I mean, I, I, do I think that new faces could potentially come in? Yeah, I do. But let's see what happens, though. To, let's see how this whole CBA thing goes out, and let's see how much they have to spend or whatever. Yeah, you guys might be in the market for a shortstop. For we I, could be. From what I've been told. That's what I've seen, too, recently. Well, I, well, I've told you. I've been, I've been, it's been rumored that they want to move Xander to second. And he's open to that. Yes. I've heard he's open to that. Yep. So, if that's the case, I, man, I don't know who if I would want Correa, Seager, or you're Story. Not getting, you're not getting Correa. I, I, Correa to the fine. Yankees is, that, is, is, is a lock. That's fine. Where? To the Yankees is a lock. How do you know that? I, trust me, it's a lock. I, I will. That is the only more sure bet than the Patriots going sub-500. We'll see about that. That is the only more sure bet I have in my life. I would say I would want, oof, out of all of them, probably Story, maybe, for the right-handed bat. But uh, I was going to go Simeon. Oh, yeah, you, oh, that's right. That's right. I forgot about Simeon. I would take Simeon away from Toronto just because Toronto's freaking lethal. Yeah. So, man, a lot, lot for the Sox. It, it, this season, for me at least, really would you, looked at... Would you potentially look at... No, I'm interrupt you. Would you potentially look at... Getting, putting Dahl back on the bench and bringing in Freddie Freeman? Yep. Or Tony Rizzo? Yeah. I would be open to that idea. Def definitely. I mean... It's a possibility. You, br 
if that's the case, I mean, is that that to me is a no-brainer. I mean, you're bringing in you either bring in an MVP caliber player or you bring in an all-star first baseman and you still have the farm system that you have right now. I mean, that's that's a no-brainer to me. Yeah, I would definitely look into that if uh, if um that's open. Mm. What about you? What? Would you look into that if you were the Sox? If I'm the Red Sox, I think it's time to go I think, over the tax. Yeah, I think this is the year you go over the tax. And I would look at bringing in... I would bring in Cassianos to play outfield over Renfro. Okay. Uh, I'd bring in Freeman to play first. I'd bring in Simeon to play short. And then I... Because you could also... Put, like, you could also... Play, so that way you could you have the opportunity to platoon... Uh, Kike, Xander, and Simeon at second short, and you know you can you get the opportunity to rotate them out, sit people down, get people rest, and then, uh, like I said, you bring bring in Freeman, then you, because Freeman is gonna light up the Yankees. He'll light up the Yankees and yep. Yankee Stadium, and that gives you the freedom to bring in Dahlbeck and let him play third. Yep. Um, and then if you also sign those players to like two year, three year deals. By the time those deals are expired, you'll be looking at Marcelo Meyer should be projected to be in the league yep. by then. Yep. So, I mean, that'll give you time to go back under, too, so you can go back up. Exactly, so you can yep. reset. Good. Long segment for them, but I feel like well-deserved for this. Red... Oh, my God. How did I almost end this Red Sox segment with um, almost forgetting this? So, oh. while I was gone in Florida, I saw the breaking news... On the legendary Jerry Remy. And I saw that. And my first thought was, wow. I honestly did not think that the last time I would see Jerry Remy was him throwing out the first pitch at the wild card game. Yeah, uh, even though my team, my former team lost, <laughs> I am glad that I went to that game. Me for, too. For that. As well as getting me Bucky Den. But, still... Glad to see. Uh, glad to know that I was uh, I was able to see Jerry Remy throw out that first pitch. He had a long battle. I mean, you. I mean, you. If you if you battle cancer six, you know, six times, and you don't really expect to keep going. No. Seven different not. battles throughout thirteen years. That is crazy. And I'll admit too, like that wild card game when he threw out the first pitch. You, you can see in this picture here, he does not look well. No. He just don't look well. I mean, he, 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 just seeing him with his tubes and all that, it was just sad for me. And it, 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 parts, how do I put this? Um, it's sad to see him go, but I also feel at the same time that it's a blessing that. He, he is gone because now he doesn't have to go through all of his chemotherapy. He doesn't have to suffer through this fight no more. I assume he was in a ton of pain going through this or whatever. Oh, yeah. And his family definitely suffered seeing him go through this. So I feel like at the same time, yes, it's sad to see him go. Yes, we're all struck from this. But at the same time, we got to look at it and say he's not suffering no more. And he definitely did not deserve to suffer. And this this could have been a blessing that yes, because now he's not now he's not in now he's not in this pain and no more. And that's it. He he's at peace. Yep. Uh, any last words on Jerry before we move on? I think he's just great commentator, great personality that's going to be missed. Um and I mean, growing up, you just remember Don Arcel and Jerry Remy, and even now with uh, when you had Obi and and Eck, they were, it was just always it was, it made watching baseball so much better, and it just showed you how lucky we were to be in this market where we got to watch that. I I grew up I grew up with Jerry Remy being the broadcaster for the Sox, and that's all I know yeah. for the most part. And now, listening to Sox games. Without Jerry Remy on the on the um in the broadcast, it's just gonna feel different for me. It's just gonna feel different. So rest in peace to Jerry Remy. Uh, my condolences are with the family and friends of Rem Dog. 
And I hope I hope they get through this rough time right now. But also, I would say he obviously suffered for a long time, and it, now he's at peace. Now he's at peace, and he's in a better place. So that's my thoughts on that. And the Red Sox, this was definitely a long segment at 32 minutes. And now we head over to the Bees. All right, for the Bruins, I'm going to start by saying, um, do we miss Tuka Rask yet? No. Do we miss tu no, Tubby don't. Tuke yet? Don't, don't be crazy. Don't be <laughs> stupid. Don't be stupid. Starting off the season 5-3. You wrote an article on the Bruins offseason saying that they had a good offseason. Yeah. Um, why do you feel like they had a good offseason? I, I just want to start off there for a little bit. I I really like who they brought in um, and what they did. Like I, uh, Taylor Hall loved the fact that they re-signed him for relatively cheap money. He's been playing pretty great. Uh third on the team for points and he makes David Potts look like you know nothing because Taylor Hall's got the skill that's unbelievable uh going next to uh you know you keep going down Forbert he's played okay um what is his name Nosek there yep unbelievable yeah unbelievable uh Omar is playing pretty good uh Hollis Hollis whatever I you know Right now, got a minus four plus minus, so he just he'll he'll need to take some time. And Felino does not be on the ice right now, kind of hurts. But at the same time, we don't really need him right now. He's more of a locker room presence that I would want in the postseason. So my biggest move from the Bruins did not happen in the off season. It happened in the preseason, and that was for me locking up one of. The, a top five defenseman in the league for, I believe it was eight years, I want to say? Yep. Charlie McAvoy. That was the biggest move, I feel like, for the Bruins because without de without uh, defense and top-notch defense, you're not going to win games because you're going to rely too much on the goalie making saves, and obviously a goalie can't make a save every single time. So locking up a top five defenseman for the contract that they did was huge. Now, having said that, you mentioned Allmark. Uh, yeah, he's been playing good, but for t for four years at twenty million, I don't know. I don't know how to feel about that. To be completely honest with you, for a guy who has been on Buffalo, yeah, he hasn't proven that much. But like at the same time. He's young, so maybe he plans out. If they were going to make a goalie change, I was with you. Play the kid. Play the kid. Um, stack up on defense and go from there. And then also, we had an unexpected move happen this offseason too. The Bruins lost David Krejci. So... After you signed Felino, Hala, and Nosek for the forwards, all of a sudden, you need a center. And you didn't go out and get a bona fide second line center. Unless you really want to count that uh, Charlie Coyle is a second line center. Hey, you know what? He's been playing like one. <laughs> he, he Seriously, he's got, what, five points? Yeah, he's he's tied for third on your team with points with, with McAvoy, Pasnock, and Hall. And I hope he proves me wrong. I mean, I, I again, I hope he's, he's been killing it. He's been doing good so far. So maybe maybe it was just an injury year for Charlie Coyle. Then I don't know, but I'm not gonna rule out the fact that David Krejci may not come. I'm not gonna rule out the fact that we could see a return in David Krejci later on this season. What would you say on that? Definitely a good opportunity for that to happen. I don't think he's going to play for another team. Um, I just don't think that's who he is, and I think that he really likes Boston. Boston's his home in, in America. Um, 
I just think he really just wanted to go back and, and play at his home country with his family, play over there. Yep. And because I think he's just a little bit homesick. Uh, due to probably not be able to go over there during COVID. So I think you want to go over there, see his family, hang out with them, uh, spend time with them, play some hockey over there. And then, you know, like they said, he could always come back, get re-signed, and be ready to go for the postseason. It's not like he hasn't been playing hockey. Right. So he don't need a whole lot of time to, to tune back up into the system. Um, but I do believe that putting Coyle with second-line talent, or, you know, technically Taylor Hall could be first-line talent, you put him, you surround him with some talent. He's been playing pretty good. I think it was just might have been just with the, the, his line mates on the third line that you know I don't see what was holding him back, but I just, maybe they just weren't the best pairing for him. You know, I was ready you know, when I was in Florida, right? I I stayed in in I stayed on track of what was going on back in Boston for this the Bruins and all that, and I was getting ready. To rip on the Bruins when I was coming back because, like, my God, they had some bad wins in this early stretch, but then they beat Florida, an undefeated team who was eight and zero at the time, in a shootout win. Omar stood on his freaking head in the overtime and in the shootout, and I was like, okay, this is the win that gets them back on track. So, so what I what I will say is. With all this, with all the flack he's been giving Allmark, right? Yeah. Three and one, he stood like he's been the top performer when he's played twice, and I I just think that the one the one game they lost was against Florida, which like you said it was an eight no t- or, or you know at the time would have been like what four no going through that game maybe maybe six and zero oh, but yeah they were just there. they were just a better team that were just coached better, um, and <coughs> apologies. Um, and, and their offense didn't show up. You only scored you, in the you, you got one goal. There's not many games where you're gonna win with one goal. Yeah, that's true. So, I just think that I, I think that he's playing really well, and I think he's really helping Swayman out a lot. And I just think that uh, you should give some, you give them some time to work with the defense and get and get ready. All right. So, I have to talk about what game was it? The <coughs> last Thursday's game. Did you catch any of that? No. By chance? Birch run, four goals. He is he's like 30 is 36 now, still going strong. This the, the statement win there too. Having I think Detroit's been good this season too. That 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 has shown that this team is starting to come back to life, especially after that huge win against Florida. They absolutely dominated the Detroit Red Wings and let's see what happens there. You got Toronto tonight. And then you got Ottawa here, and then the Oiler, uh, the Oilers with Connor McDavid, New Jersey. You got an opportunity to get back in the rhythm of winning a little bit. Yeah, you do, and uh, I think that uh, you this is, these are the games that you're gonna watch and that are gonna be honestly make or break it. But I think these are gonna show you more of the character of this team. Um, and it's crazy to think that Brad Marchand has been getting better and better and better each year. It's it's really amazing, isn't it? He, he doesn't seem to be peaking. He keeps get, like he keeps working on his game. He keeps getting better, and he keeps he he is probably the the number one Bruin right now. I would say right now on this team, if you if you had to make it if you had to trade anybody on this team, I would or I would say anybody but McAvoy and Marshan. I would let Pasternak. I would let Pasternak be traded before I let Marshan be traded right now because Marshan is just playing out of his mind right now. Twelve I, points in eight games. I give. I'm gonna give you five. I'm gonna say five untouchables. There's five untouchables for me. Well, yeah. Marshan, Bergeron, uh, Pasta, Hall, and McAvoy. Those are my five. Anybody else? Uh, you can have. I would say maybe Swayman. Maybe, yeah. I mean, if you wanted to add a goalie for an untouchable, then yeah, that's that's true too. But other than that, you you could you could I could definitely see them any of them traded to uh, upgrade the team. Yeah, without a doubt. And then before we head it to our next segment, and before I really thought I really thought that the. Uh, Celtics ripping was over, but apparently that's not the case. Before we go to there, one thing I do want to mention 
is why do we have some of these NHL games on ESPN Plus, Hulu, or whatever? It's the most annoying thing in the world. Like, I know there was, at least, I think there was one game, I think it was against Buffalo, in Buffalo. It was ESPN Plus. And the only way you can watch these games is if you have a subscription to that, I believe. Yep. That is so asinine that you can't even watch your home team play in one game. Actually, what's it at least? They have at least five games during the season, something like that? Where it's like Hulu or ESPN Plus, something like that? Regardless. It's because ESPN Plus bought the the television rights which i understand that but like and this is just what's, this is what's gonna happen yeah it sucks give us an option to watch it like on nesting nesting or whatever or like honestly i want to give a shout out to my buddy derek he he came up with this idea um have something kind of like have something kind of like mlb what is it uh, what's the MLB subscription or whatever where you can watch your team from anywhere? You can still do that with the NHL. You can, but like, you. But it's. How do I put it? But it's your team, right? And you, there's like no commercials. The camera stays on the, on the ice or whatever. You get to see like what it's like to be at the game or whatever. And every single night is just your commentators, whether it's on Nesson. If it's on, e- if it's an ESPN game or something like that, then you have your, then you have um, Jack, Jack Edwards and um, Berkeley, Ber- Berkeley, for a special like Bruins coverage or whatever, and it's just, and it's just them, and you get to watch them instead of ESPN. Give us an option. I'd rather, I'd pay for that honestly before ESPN Plus. That's just what happens. That's why TV TV deal at our TV deals are very underrated in wh- how uh, what what and what goes on during uh, TV rights. If ESPN bought the rights, keep it on like ESPN or whatever. Like what? Or give us an option to what? If see, you, the if problem like- is that there's only one ESPN thing, and some nights you have football on that, and they're not they're gonna they're not gonna give up football for NHL. So Monday nights are out. And sometimes they have the prime time for boxing on Saturday nights, and they're not—they're not, not going to give that up for the NHL. They're just—they have the ESPN has too many has too many things, so they're putting on ESPN Plus, which is sad. That I mean, it, it is what it is. If your team is on ESPN Plus, you should at least be able to have the option to watch it somewhere other than ESPN Plus. You—you you can. You just have to have the NHL Network. Do, do, is that what they do? Yeah, but you have to be subscribed to the NHL Network package. Damn. Like, it's one of those things where it's like if you want to watch the Red Zone, you have to be subscribed to the NFL Network. Right. So as long as you're subscribed to the NHL Network, then you can watch the games depending on what game it is. Because they can only, like, I think the NHL Network only has like one or two uh, TV channels. So all right. It's stupid. I it's know. Just, yeah, it, it annoys the crap out of me too because I have to go on a streaming site like Stream. It's called Stream East. And that's a free like streaming site yeah. where like you can get anything there for yep. for nothing, and I had to I had to set that I had to figure that out to uh, watch it so I didn't have to pay for the ESPN Plus subscription, and like it's like why do I have to watch it like that? It's like it sucks, but I was at work so like normally that's what I do when I'm at work. I go on Stream East and then watch my games from through there, but. I'm ready to rip on the Celtics. I'm glad this segment was short after the, our long Red Sox segment. Yep, let's keep the next one short too. Yeah, I, I don't know about that. I really don't know if this is going to be short because I have a lot to talk about this Celtics team. Well, I've been a fan of Boston Celtics for, uh, you know, my whole life pretty much. My first Celtics team was back when I was like seven. And the Boston Celtics became legendary. Yeah. Alright, I'm going to start off by saying this. For those of you still wondering when our next Celtics game is going to be for a vlog, definitely ain't happening soon. Definitely not happening soon. I'm starting to get annoyed with this team. And I'm going to say this. I am this close from jumping ship back to the LeBron train over the Celtics. I'm this close. I am this close. 
of how annoyed I've been with this Celtics team. And that's just counting the offseason moves. That's counting the way they are still playing. That counts this team. That counts everything about the Celtics. And it just keeps on continuing. I really didn't think it could get worse from last year. I really thought they made some good moves, but um, then it, it's the moves that they made after we were like, really? And I have to start off with a dude who made the bag and somehow is stuck with us for another four years. Why? Why is he still here? I don't know. I think he. I. I. I honestly have a lot of respect for Marcus Smart. After uh... he was right about that, though, I will agree. Yeah, after he made those comments, and you know what? They played their balls off the past two games. After he said that, held held the Heat and the Magic, which obviously the Magic suck, but he held the the Heat, the number two team in the in the East, to seventy eight points. Yep. You know what? They, they, there's something about it, and they keep playing like it, then hey, you know what? I like it. I like the fact that he called them out for it. I, I, I will say that. I like the fact that they called him, he called them out for it too. Somebody needed to say the ball needs to start moving better. Somebody had to say it. Nobody was going to say it. Uh, and of course, it's going to be the, the last guy who should be talking in the room saying it, but you know what? Hey, Somebody no, said it. But he's, but... What he said is right. Yeah. If you pass the ball around, he wouldn't be taking all these, you know, I'm going to dribble it down and I'm going to pull up and shoot it. Because the problem is, is he wants to shoot sometimes, but he, the, you know, once you pass the ball to Tatum and Brown, they just go iso ball and then shoot bad shots. So you know what? If, if they want to, if everybody keeps passing the ball around, then you'll find the best shot and then, you know, everybody will get their shots and they should get their points. That was a good team win Thursday. That was one of the best team wins I've seen in a long time by the Celtics. Yeah, and it sucks the fact that they can only play good on the road. They haven't even won a game at home. I know. Like, how, how about the game that they blew 20 points to the Bulls? Can you believe that? They blew a 20-point lead to the Bulls. Because, yeah. I know. <laughs> I wish I could get his face. But, yeah. Keep smacking you. Keep smacking you. He's smacking your like, forehead, cause like, uh, I came home. I think it was that. What? No. What day? What day was that game? That game was the first. I came home the next day, I believe. And then all I was seeing on Twitter was about the Bulls or whatever. I was like, what the hell happened in this game? Then I watched the highlights, and I was like, are you kidding me? Like that's unacceptable. And like Marcus Smart. It, I, I would go along by saying, adding this with Marcus Smart. This guy right here, stop complaining about the refs. Stop it. They're not going to they're not gonna bail you out every single time you dribble the ball so much and just go to the rim. It's not, that's not their job. Play the game the right way. Play your game, and then you'll get calls. Stop looking for the refs to bail you out. I'm just so sick of them going, What's the call? What the hell was that? That's n And then, obviously, you hurt the team doing that every single time because they'll look at you and go, T, technical. I, 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 these guys have gotten soft. And uh, another thing I'm going to add, too, is a lot of people have complained about the um no the no more foul on the um the pump fake and then you lean into them or whatever suck it up best rule suck it up that was a great rule yes. so you're not getting another so you're not getting one call that's not a foul guys that's you trying to that's it should be a foul on you yeah it's it's maddening and that rule change has made the NBA watchable Better. now. It, it made is, it watchable. It is watchable. Because uh, I've, been, I've been saying, I forget what podcast, I've been saying this almost every podcast, that the product has gone terrible because of how 
soft these BS calls are. And honestly, it makes the game go by faster because you don't have to stop and give James Harden 50 free throws a game. You kill, you stop the clock. He has to shoot it. Just keep playing. Just keep playing game. Be tougher. This is that that this is why all the old heads are saying, oh, you know, in my game it was so much tougher. You know what? They were right. This, the, yeah. The game was tougher. It was because they weren't getting stupid calls like that. Is the closeout on defense like when a player closes out on defense and get under the shooter? Is that still a foul? Yeah, because that's that's a that's a dangerous play. Okay. Because uh, that happened because of the Kawhi Leonard with Zaza Zaza, Zaza, right. Zaza Pachulia. That just showed that it was a dangerous play. So yeah, I do believe that the closeout is still and the closeout is one of the most dangerous plays in the NBA. They shouldn't have, like that shouldn't be a thing anyways. Yeah. And if you do that, then you're just a freaking prick. So I'm looking at some scores here from the games this season. Got overtime. Be, um, besides the overtimes, besides the overtimes. 115-83, They're right around 100 points instead of like 130, 140 points or whatever in, in regular time. Good! I want to see defense back in this game again. Because before, it's just... All the game was is who could shoot better. That's all the bas- That's all that basketball was the, the last few years. And I'm glad that defense is actually playing a factor again. And in that case, just suck it up. Play the game. Play your game. If you get if you get hit, don't even complain. Just to, just just move on. Do, shake it off, and play your game. You'll get the calls eventually. But the complaining needs to stop. Yeah. The problem isn't with everybody else. The problem is with you. That's it. You're the problem. It, 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 like, the game against Toronto. You lost 115-83. Your highest score only had 18 points. How many turnovers? I, I, I'm interested to see that because that's been always our thing. Pass the ball more. Or... Don't dribble it and turn the ball. Don't dribble too much and turn the ball over. Alrighty, Celtics with a whopping 19 assists and 25 turnovers. Hey, the trend continues, boys. The trend versus Toronto's 22 assists and 11 and turnovers. 11 turnovers. Ooh, let's see, let's see another one. This is always this is always the best part when we cover the Celtics, right? Seeing the turnover, the uh, assist to turnover do ratio. We, do, do we want to look at, at a, a, one of the overtime games? See how crazy those turnovers could be? <laughs> yeah, sure. Let's do that for fun. And then we'll go to the Bulls. We'll do that. We'll do one of the double overtimes and we'll go to the Bulls. Celtics turnovers. They only had 11. Ooh. In double overtime, only 11 to 23 assists. To Washington, no. You know, but it doesn't matter. They score yeah. With, when they when they have more assists and less turnovers, they have 112 points and not 83. Washington's been actually decent this year. They're kind, kind of shocked with that too. I mean, they did make nah, some good they moves. They always do that, and then they peter out. Well, we'll see. It's because they're riding the Kyle Kuzma train. That's true. All yeah. right, 128 to 114 against the Bulls. He broke up with his girlfriend, so yeah, maybe he's gotten back into his game. So, uh, 20 assists and only nine turnovers. I, I am. What sh- the hell happened there then? I am shocked. What? Shoot. And they shot 43, 43 and 45 percent. How did they lose that game? Oh, that's why. Bulls shot fucking. Oh, that's blurred. But <laughs> they shot a huge 57 percent from the field. Maybe that has to do with it. Yeah, but they still didn't shoot better three pointers than you. You short. You you made more three pointers than they did. What the heck? Which one was the is that that was this the game that Marcus Smart called out the team yeah. on too? Yeah, he did with twenty assists. He called them out Hi, I, with Marcus Smart with zero assists. Called them out. <laughs> Marcus Smart zero assists, one turnover. Calling them out. <laughs> what do you mean? What I'm doing is the right thing. You what know, do you mean? You know what? He shot sixty percent from three. He shot 60% from three. Three for five. <laughs> oh, my goodness. 
Uh, Celtics, Celtics, Celtics. Uh, somebody, somebody said, I, I read, I've been reading the comment section and somebody asked me if, if we could attend the, um, Lakers Celtics game coming uh, up. Yeah. Uh, that, I, I'm sorry, pal. $161 uh, as I'm, the lowest I'm ticket? sorry, but I don't think that's happening, Chief. Oh, uh, hundred I, I wish it, sixty. I wish it could, but like, I don't think this year that's happening. And normally I do. And normally I do go to Lakers versus Celtics, but like, there's not a ticket on the floor, not on the floor, but in the first sections for less than three hundred dollars. Yeah, normally I spend about two fifty on a ticket. Court side for that game is thirty eight hundred a ticket. Go to Venmo, then we'll do it. <laughs> Go to Venmo, then we'll do it. That's what I'll say to that. He's a large Hit the line. Venmo link. Yeah, it's facts. Big facts. The hell are these? I don't even know, but all I know is I can't. After the, Again, the Red Sox blew my budget this year, so. Yeah. Sorry. Nope. Uh, yeah, no. If you got it, guys ever have any suggestions later on in the season, then let us know. Especially for Bruins, like, there's a couple I'm eyeing, eyeing out for the Bruins later on in the year. You know what? It might be cheaper for us to fly out to L.A. and go to the game in L.A. No. You serious? Uh-uh, yeah. Oh, my goodness. Look at that. Oh, my God. $254 for a floor ticket. You know, no. you know what? I'm going to do this. So that's about, uh, let's say that'd be $700 for that ticket, right? So it's, yep. it's the price for one ticket to the game in Boston is equivalent to two for the two out there. We're going to do, we're going to do this. Uh, I'm going to do this during the break and uh, give you the final numbers at the end. Fun fact, I have the uh, JetBlue credit card, right? And I have a free round trip at the moment. So... <laughs> So you don't, you wouldn't even have to worry about the flight. To be honest with you, I don't we, think we would have to pay for one flight. We'd have to pay for one fl one ticket, and then we'd have to pay for the hotel, and then you got to also remember food and like. Doesn't matter. We'll go for one night. Fuck yeah, right, exactly. But um, <clears throat> I don't think Celtics are on my mind anytime soon, and stop with the, stop with the asking of the. Ooh, when's the Celtics vlog is coming back? <laughs> you thought, boy. <laughs> Wh why? <laughs> what do you mean? I just, I'm just, like, I don't know. I hope that this team somehow turns it around, finds something out, and, and is able to do it. I can't, I, I just can't watch another season of a team that just makes a meme out of themselves like, th like last year, like this guy did. Like... And it honestly looks like it's going that way too, and it's just, god damn, too bad. It's just too bad. Oh boy, wow. I hope this is for per person, because this is for two people, then, my gosh. That is per person. Oh wait. Yeah, it is. Yeah, that is per person. But hey, you know what? $500. Still cheaper to fly out there. Yeah. It is still cheaper to go out to L.A. for a game than it is to go to Boston for That's this game. That's just insane. That's nuts. And the ticket prices are only going to go down as the game gets closer, too. Mm-hmm. Like, I and know... And as the Celtics start to suck more and more. And I know on game day for the Celtics, it's normally, like, around... For Laker games, because, like, I've been to a few... It's normally around like two fifty a pop for a loads box. For on on the day of game day, yeah. It's hold on, I I want to see something, dude. Oh my god. Ooh, we might be going to OK, OKC next year. They're doo doo. Yeah, but the bo if we go to the Celtics game. Uh, $229 for Road J behind the Celtics bench. Depends on how many rows there are on there. 
A, B, C, D, E, yeah. F, G, H, I, J. Ten. That's not bad. Ten rows. And that's center court. That's not terrible. No! It's behind their damn bench! We can go on the other side. We can go on the other side from their benches, and we could probably find... Maybe we want the Celtics to suck still. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my God. I can't believe it. Oh, maybe we go to Chicago. So I got a, I got a question to ask you. Chicago. When are you writing off the season again for the Celtics? When are you making a decision if the Celtics are legit or not? Because we had that uh, same question for the Red Sox. We're going to have the same question for the Celtics. When, 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 did, when will I write them off? Yeah. When, when do you mean by writing them off? Like, w- when for the I, season. When I know... Like, that, like, when... I don't think I ever wrote onto the season. Oh, well, that's true. You're right. Yeah. I don't okay, think... when are you going to write onto the season, then? If they win ten games in a row. Damn. Okay. Get, well, uh, you know what? Win four games in a row at home. All right. And then we'll talk. All righty. And beat some real teams. Like, you got Toronto, who beat you pretty bad second game. You got Milwaukee coming into town. You got the Lakers. You got the OKC, Houston, and Bro- by Thanksgiving, Thanksgiving. Okay. Because that's right after. That's right before the Brooklyn game. Yep. At home. Yep. That's what I would tell you. All right. Is that it for the Celtics? Gosh, I would hope so. Yeah, I think that's it for the Celtics. I mean, it's just old news again for them. It's just, it's just news that same keeps, old, same it just keeps old. continuing. And at this point, is is the question is almost going to be becoming: Is Jason Tatum and Jalen Brown on the same team? The problem that's that might be the next question: Is those two players on the same team the issue with the Celtics? That's a question for later on. If they keep continuing to suck and blow, but now. We go to a team that, so far for me, has been underwhelming. Who, maybe this guy had it right. Maybe. We'll see. But, he might be eating eating that prediction. So He might be eating up that prediction, saying, Here. here. He might be feeding me, like saying, Here you go. I Suck told on you. that one, but. Yeah, you, want, you, you, want, you don't think I'm right. Here you go. Maybe. So. Maybe. Michael, watch. Are you ready for some football? I love the Patriots. All right, so at the moment, for the Patriots, a whopping four and four. So at the moment, five hundred. I told you. Put some respect. On my prediction. Hey, I predicted them at 500. Right now. No, you didn't. Yeah, I did. I predicted them at over 500. Yeah, get the get out of here. I'm right there. Yeah, it's gonna be a it's gonna be a tight race race to the finish for this bet. It's gonna be a tight race. But you're not gonna get your next one until Atlanta. Oh man. And then after that, won't be till Jacksonville. Jesus. Ah. Uh, so. If you will see Carolina this week with PJ Walker at quarterback. I am. No, I'm saying if you do, you're really going to tell me that you think that uh, that this team's going to go above 500. If you lose to Carolina, I, there's no way they get up to above 500. It's the path. It's the path to the playoffs. The path is back. If you if you it, lose to Carolina, if you lose to Carolina, there is no path. Did, you will not beat the Browns. You will not beat the Titans. You will not beat the Bills either time, and you will not beat the Colts. I still. I mean. How would you grade Mac Jones' season so far? He's played okay. He's he's played better better than last year. He's played, played, he's, played, played, he's played better than Cam Newton did last year. Yeah, that's, this is true. Did you think the Patriots would be better or worse if they had Cam Newton over Mac Jones right now? You might have beat the Dolphins week one, but I don't think you, you beat any of the other teams. Well, actually, you probably do because you only beat... Yeah, no. You'd probably be the same. You'd be the same. You'd be the same as them. Yeah, but okay. you've also played, you know, the only real competition you've beat so far is with the Chargers. That was a good win. Yeah, and, and and you know, you might, and I don't think you'd be as close as you were with the Cowboys or the Bucks. I don't think you'd be that as close as you were in those games. 
But oh, gotta give it to this guy then. No. Oh wait, no, I ain't giving you crap. I ain't giving you crap because this guy whooped your. Well, he didn't whoop your ass, but he still beat you. And you know what? At the end of the day, he came clutch at the end of that game, the game that I went to, and you didn't come up clutch. You should have made the call to go for it on fourth down at the end of the game, and you choked it. You choked that game away. That was right in your face. I think you have it all wrong. I think Bill showed that he's better. That that Bill is better than Brady in no, that game. No way. Bill is better than Brady in that game. He had the better quarterback. He had the better quarterback, but at the end of the day, what matters is the W or the L. You held the L. No, I'm not in that game. In that game, coming close is is better. Is just as good. I will say though, they impressed me that game because since they thought Brady was gonna come in here and drop a fifty piece. Yep. Uh, and they have, they didn't have Gronk, but the Patriots often have Gilmore. They still shut him down. They shut Brady down. They played a lot better than I th I did think they were going to. I will give you that. Yes, it, yes, they did. I I think I think the Patriots if the if if they what. Mac Jones, it, it's oh, hold on. Let me put it like this: If they played each other in like week twelve, week thirteen, I think the Patriots outbeat the Buccaneers by twenty. Okay. I because you have Mac Jones who'll be able to throw the ball. So did that game? So now I gotta ask you this: Did that game change your perspective? Obviously, it didn't change your perspective on the season, but does it does it look better for the Patriots going into the future? With the decisions they've made. Yeah, you have a quarterback. You have a real quarterback. You have a real quarterback now. You don't have Cam Newton. You have a quarterback of the future that you can build around for the next 10 years. So you think Mac Jones is the guy for the future then? I think he is a guy for the future. Oh, well, oh sorry. For, for for what Bill likes to do, I think Mac Jones is the quarterback for the future. Okay. Yes. All right. I don't think – I don't think – and then and, and, and then over a 10-year – over the next 10 years, I don't think Mac Jones will be the best quarterback from the draft class. He might be the most decorated because he's he went to an actual team with an actual coach. So do you uh, and so, into an actual system? But I just don't I don't think that he'll be the most potential. Like he won't be remembered as the best quarterback from this class. Obviously, obviously, maybe not. But he might be. You know, but he might have gone from being the fifth taken to maybe the the third best, second best. Yeah. Okay. But I just think, like I said, you you haven't seen a quarterback prospect since Tre Trevor Lawrence and Andrew Luck or. or Elway or Peyton Manning, and, and Justin Fields has shown that he can actually play pretty well. He still doesn't have an offensive line. He's still playing pretty well. And, uh, I don't know. I see you have a, a slide here. This is GOAT, and I really hope that is a picture of Mike White of the New York Jets. Nope, it's Tom Brady. Mike White on the New York Jets should be the GOAT <laughs> picture. That guy is unbelievable. I think Mike White might be better than Mac Jones, though. Okay. I will say that. Because Mike White balled out yeah, in his he did. first career start. Yeah, he did. I will I, say I, that. I, I will give you that. That, that. that was just a that was just a slide from when I was projected to do this podcast. But obviously, we had delays and all that with the Red Sox. So obviously, it didn't happen. So here's the schedule for the remainder of the season, right here. You can have a look at it. I already know. Give you your prediction. Give me your, give me your predictions for the remainder of the year. Carolina loss. Cleveland. Loss. Atlanta, win. Tennessee, loss. Buffalo, loss. Bye week, bye week. Indy, loss. Buffalo, loss. Jacksonville. Jacksonville, so that's a win. It's Jacksonville. <laughs> and then Miami. I'm going to go I'm going to go tie. Okay. Oh, well, I, I don't I don't know I don't know how to predict the Miami game because I mean I think you should beat Miami. Will you? Because like this might this is gonna be Mac Jones's first game going from playing in the absolute cold practicing all week to going into hot, humid, sticky Miami weather. Okay. So even though he's he grew up in in Florida in, in uh, Alabama, I don't know if he will be. Uh, Easily adjustable from playing from the cold to the heat. So, that is my prediction. Okay. So, I have Carolina as a win. Cleveland as a win. Atlanta as a win. Tennessee a loss. Buffalo a loss. Indianapolis a win. 
Buffalo lost again. Jacksonville a win, and Miami a win. So I have them, I believe, 9-8 and eight finishing the season. Oh, was it Carolina win? Yep. Cleveland? Win. Atlanta? Win. So that's up to 7. Win against Indy's 8. Jacksonville's 9. Miami's 10. Okay. So I have them 10-7. and seven. Yeah, that's about where I had them at the beginning of the year, for the most part. And, um... Obviously, there's been news breaking out this week about Stephon Gilmore and how he felt on the Patriots uh, figuring out their situation with Gilmore and how he was treated. Um, how do you think the Patriots handled Stephon Gilmore, and do you think they should have restructured his contract? I think they should have traded him last season. I think that once you started, you like last season when you once you saw. You weren't gonna do anything. You should have traded for. You should have traded him for something. Uh, that was before he had the hip surgery, coming off of the defensive player of the year, the previous year. I think you could have made. You could have gotten it probably better. You probably could have got closer to maybe a second, um, maybe even a first. Uh, but I just think it was time to move on. Bills only have to pay quarter cornerbacks, and well, his next season is gonna be whether he pays. J.C. Jackson or not, because J.C. Jackson is gonna has to be paid next offseason. Yep. So we'll see how that goes. You think they should pay J.C. Jackson? Yes. Yes, hundred percent. Yes. I like I like him a lot. Okay. I think that he's a he's a real uh, he's a competitor. Yep. So I think that he he would be the he he will be the, one of the best corner. He'll be a top ten corner in the league if he's not there already. Didn't the trade deadline just pass for the for the uh? NFL two, not yes. too long, and the Patriots didn't do anything. Uh, yeah. Yep, yeah, that's well. Not... The trade, the trade deadline isn't like the same like it is in most teams, okay. but doesn't matter because probably the best people, the best name, the biggest name to be moved this se- mid season was just released. Yep, or it's going to be released on Monday. Yep. So if you really want to go get a, a, an addition at wide receiver. Odell Beckham's available. He's available. Yep. And then also, um, Deshaun Jackson got released not too long ago as well. Yeah. That would be a great fit for this Patriots team. If uh, I don't know because I don't know if Max Jones will be able to push the ball downfield. Okay. Because that, that's really what Deshaun Jackson is. You know, I can see Deshaun Jackson going to, like, Kansas City. You know, Kansas City really won't need him. Um, I can see Deshaun Jackson maybe going to Tampa. Another team that doesn't need wide receiver and help, but... No, but... He's gonna go to a team, maybe, maybe. Honestly, he could go to Green Bay. Yep. Um, he just needs to go to a team with a quarterback who can throw the ball forty plus yards and hit him in stride. If the Patriots get Odell, does that change your mindset on the Patriots season? No, I think they'll lose more games. You think they'll I lose think, more? I think they lose more games. Really? Yeah, because Odell Beckham was a head case. That dude's a fucking nut job. I think Odell is might be one of the most overrated players in the NFL. Oh wow! At all time. Well, that's coming from I, a Cleveland Browns fan, so I mean, I, I, I think that because Odell Beckham Senior had a bunch of pic, or a bunch of videos where he said, "Look, my son was open here. Like, why didn't Baker send like pass the ball to him?" Yeah. And there's a couple of them where if Baker passed the ball, Odell will wake up in a in, in a back of a hospital yep. bed because he would have been absolutely leveled by his safety. There was just no way of getting him the ball, but his father seems to feel like he could have gotten, like could have given him the ball. It, it, it's just, and even when he gets the, when he gets past the ball when he's open, he tries to make flashy plays where he tries to grab it with one hand and he drops the ball or he he he, he, he drops the ball too much. Mm-hmm. I I just I just don't trust him, and I wouldn't want to bring him in. All right, well, I I, I will say this, the. Um, Baker Mayfield is 20 points completion percentage better without Odell Beckham on the field. He goes from 65 with Odell to an 85 without Odell on the field. Really? Yeah. He is so much better without him, and I wouldn't want to bring him in with a young quarterback. Odell needs to go somewhere with, a, with an older, veteran, established player because the Patriots don't really like to throw – I mean, they've recently begun throwing the ball, but I think if you bring him in here with Mack – He's gonna get. He's gonna tell Max to start throwing him the ball, even when he's not open, and he's gonna start throwing more interceptions. Huh. I wouldn't bring him in. 
All right. Not the time, not the place, not the not the not the player. All right. So as we finish this podcast, I think the story of this podcast was definitely you giving the Sox an F minus. F minus. But big F minus. But as we as we wrap up this podcast, we're gonna go into some hot takes for the Red Sox and all the other and all the other Boston sports teams as well. So I just have to give a little bit of an update on our YouTube channel and on our website as well. Obviously, as you guys know, the Red Sox went farther in the postseason than we've expected them to go to. And I'm also coming off of a very hefty, expensive vacation as well. So there will not be any vlogs going forward. I will let you guys know, obviously, when a video a vlog will be coming out beforehand on our instagram and all that so make sure you go follow those for updates on our website and channel whatever um if he's going to games obviously he'll record but as for me i'm not going to one anytime soon that i'm blanking on at least if something happens obviously i'll let you guys know if i am attending a game and so what you guys are gonna can be looking out going forward um a lot of podcasts obviously like this uh, maybe we'll do a playthrough of the Bruins season Celtic season whatever and maybe we'll do we'll, we'll we'll figure out some stuff here and there I've been coming up with some ideas but for the most part I would say definitely look out be, be on the lookout for some articles going on the website um, definitely something that I want to write about Jerry Remy I definitely want to do a Jerry Remy article, um, a Red Sox uh, a Red Sox recap for the season. That's an article I want to do. And um, do you have anything that you want to maybe write about? Um, probably how the uh, Patriots are going to go under five hundred. Okay. Uh, maybe maybe uh, I don't. Know. So that would be a mid season recap for the Patriots. Is there? Yep. Okay, all right. Um, haven't done anything Celtics for a while, so maybe you you can take a Celtics one too, so that way we'll split two and two. Sure. Um. Yeah. Th so definitely a few articles coming out here and there, and um. F minus really for the Red Sox and F minus. F minus. I can't believe that. You're giving the robot an F minus. Well, yeah, he's a robot. Of course he can. <laughs> of course he can an F minus. Hello, we're talking about. Are we sure this has nothing to do with the uh, assault of them not of the uh, Red Sox knocking off your Yankees? I don't know what you're talking about. I am not a Yankees fan. Stop it. Get some help. Oh, that's. <laughs> uh, I don't know what you're talking about. <laughs> so when are we gonna get the news on when? Um... Your new uh, team gonna, is. We're gonna see. We're we're gonna see. Uh, we're gonna see what the off season looks like. So what first. what 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 teams are you interested in right now? Uh, we're looking a lot into uh, the background of the the Padres, the Blue Jays, and the Tampa Bay Rays right now. We're doing a lot of research into them. Are the Red Sox on your list? And hell no, no. That no. has to no. What 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 played a factor in that? just that I just can't do it to myself. What do you mean you can't do it to yourself? I can't do you it. You live here. I can't do it to myself. I can't bring myself to uh to be come to become a Red Sox fan now. <sighs> it's too ingrained in me to hate them. But but too ingrained in you to hate them. But we but we literally we we had you in a Red Sox hat. Gotcha, bitch. <laughs> No, that's Xander what do you mean? That's Xander Bogart's hat. Oh, yeah. <laughs> and he's not even like a top five shortstop in the league, so I can't even be a big fan of him. Top five shortstops: Bo Bichette, Tatis, Correa, Seager. Uh, you can't even think of one. Wander Franco. Oh. <laughs> I'm just blanking on Franco's name. 
You talk about all about the robots, but here you are. You're putting the Rays in contention for your next fandom of the team. Hey, you know what? But the way that they do it, though, is that they are complete robots, and they don't spend any money. So I give them credit for it. You are a half-assed robot and machine. Duh. We're gonna we're gonna give some guys a crap ton of money, and some guys nothing. And the Red Sox aren't even on it. Mm -mm. Mm, play, play the smallest violin for me. I don't yeah. care. Where? Oh Oops. my God. Oops. All I have to say is that what would you what would you have to grade would, if you had to give a grade for my editing skills from that game, the wild card game? What would you give it? Not an F minus. Not an F minus. No, pro probably like an A plus plus. Okay, all right. That, that was some great editing. That, <laughs> yeah. Okay. All right. I thought you were gonna come in here and say you made me look like a clown. Mm. Well, just letting so you know. They are still somewhere on the short list as well, depending on what they do in the off season. We'll have to see what their off season looks like. Oh wait a minute! You booed your manager though, then you're not getting it. You, you go, I want a new one. I do want a new manager, and they brought him back. But you know what? If they if they go nuclear and they start making some crazy moves, I will be right back. Oh jeez. I will put my calm makeup right back on there and become another his fan for one more season. Oh boy. I'm telling you, Correa to the Yankees gonna happen and I wouldn't be surprised if you see someone like Castellanos to the to the Yankees just bring in all righties because you know what that ballpark was made for lefties so just bring in all righties it makes <laughs> a ton of sense yeah that does make a ton of sense any hot takes for me before we head out uh do the Celtics make the postseason you had to throw that one on me huh yep so, Are we just going based off of like what I'm predicting, or based off of how they look so far? Well, you can make your prediction off of how they look so far. Okay, that's what I'm gonna do. So in that case, no. You don't. I don't. Well, if you, I'm just saying, if you continue on with this trend, you know that the reigning champions won't be in the postseason either, right? Yep. Neither will Trey Young and the Hawks. You keep in both those. If you keep both the Hawks and the Bucks out of the postseason, and Cleveland is going to make the regular, is going to make the postseason. I need to see more. I, I just need to see more. I can't. I can't really make a judgment based off of what is it, eight games. But if, but man, right now, they just look like the team that they were last year, and not about it. Cleveland, you got a shot. Yeah, Cleveland's got a chance. Cleveland, Toronto, and Washington are all in it right now. Even if they do the, are they still doing the ten, the ten team play in? Yeah, they are. You still don't think they'll make the, the play in? I think they could make the play in. Okay. Do you think they win the play in game? I don't know. It depends on the matchup, really. Hmm. It really depends on the matchup. Hmm. Hot take: Celtics might not make postseason for the first time since 2014 yep do you know what they would have done how they would have made the postseason how if they brought in Ben Simmons <laughs> bring in the man oh, bring man. in Ben Simmons that you mean the head case hey you know what he's shooting a shot back again with Kendall Jenner so oh, you know boy, what yeah he at least he has some he has some kahunas did, did he is he hitting that shot at least he's because he doesn't hit any other shot if he hits that shot then D books had a problem yeah D book would have a problem that's for sure yep but you know what he has some kahunas so I'll, I'll bring him in I I know you I know you want to bring him in I still don't want to bring him in bring him in I, I really want him to trade Marcus Smart at some point. Trade Marcus Smart for Ben Simmons. I don't want him. I don't want Ben Simmons. <laughs> Would you, That's just as bad. So, so if you were given a chance to trade Ben Simmons for Marcus Smart straight up. Mm-mm. No. 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 Wow. Yep. Okay. Yep. So, that's, that's pretty much it. That's pretty much it here. Thank you guys for watching. Hope you guys enjoyed. If you did, leave a like down below. Subscribe right now if you're new. You guys know what to do. Go check out our website. Link is in the description down below. And definitely subscribe. We've hit 
160 subscribers. We're on the road to 200 subscribers. Little little by little, we're we're, bu we're building it up little by little. And um, I know we haven't had any videos in a while, but this one we bring out. We're bringing this one out for you guys, and some more in the future. And um, time to get back to the grind. Our little break is over. So. Yep. yep. Again, thank you guys for watching. It's been Jesse. It's been Mike. And we're gone. Later, guys. Bean Town. Bean Town. Bean Town. Bean Town. Bean Town. Bean Town.